Welcome to lesson 45 in Hydraulics 102 and a lesson 3 in the section on hydraulic circuits. In this lesson we will be talking about hydraulic reservoirs or hydraulic oil tanks. The hydraulic tank or reservoir is a core part of a hydrostatic system and it has a couple of different tasks that it fulfills. The first task would be to store the needed quantity of the work fluid. The amount of the fluid has to be enough to equalize the current difference between the pressurized line and the return line in the circuit. The second job that the reservoir has is to remove the heat or to cool the work fluid down so that the work fluid temperature does not pass the allowed limit. And the third task is the separation of water, air and impurities from the work fluid. Air is separated from the work fluid on the surface in the form of bubbles while water and solid impurities are separated at the bottom of the tank because the impurities and water are heavier. Remember that the hydraulic oil is less dense than water so water will fall down. Sometimes the reservoir will have its own pump with its own motor as we can see from this picture right here. This pump is not a high pressure pump, this is only a supply pump that is used to supply the work fluid to the actual hydraulic pump. And very often you will see hydraulic reservoirs sold as complete units as you can see from this picture. Now let's see the integral parts of a hydraulic reservoir unit. So on number one we have the casing or the tank, on number two we can see left side volume, we will see why it is separated in a bit. On number three we have the glass panel for monitoring fluid levels with measuring unit so we know that the fluid levels are okay. We have the return line on number four which we can see right here. And so how do we know this is a return line? Well, it doesn't have the supply pump connected. Number five, we have the opening for pouring the work fluid in right here. On number six, we have the pressure line, the suction line right here on number six. On number seven, we can see the opening for cleaning the reservoir, which is right here. On number eight, we have the right side volume. On number nine, we have the barrier, which separates these two volumes, the left side and the right side. On number 10 we have the wire mesh filter which is used when we pour in fresh work fluid. And on 11 we have the drain. So we can drain the water for example or the work fluid when we're changing when we're pouring in fresh work fluid. We will talk about all of these components and the design choices in a bit. So here I have two more pictures. So here we can see the drain plug, the drain that we just talked about, and here we have a thermometer with a side glass. So we have the glass panel to check the work fluid, but we also have a thermometer so we can monitor the temperature of the work fluid. The baffle plate or the plate that separates the two volumes. We have the air breeder and filler where we fill in our fresh work fluid the pump inlet line and we have the drain return for the drain lines in the hydraulic system. Now how do we know how big of a reservoir will we need in our system? The reservoirs come in various volume options so we have to make sure that the reservoir we are adding to our system satisfies our work fluid quantity needs. The volume for the reservoir is usually found using this equation right here. So we can see that the volume of the oil tank is found by taking this K coefficient, which depends on the type of the hydraulic system, times the flow of the work fluid, which is in liters per minute. And of course, we get the hydraulic reservoir volume in liters. So here we can see a table for this K coefficient. If we are choosing a hydraulic tank for general purposes and we have an open loop hydraulic circuit, the K coefficient should be between 3 and 5. 
if we are making a general purpose closed loop hydraulic circuit, the coefficient should be somewhere between one and a half to two. Now, when we have mobile equipment, for example, like the ones on excavators, heavy equipment, mobile machines, and etc., and we have an open hydraulic circuit, the coefficient is between one and one and a half. And if we're using a closed loop hydraulic circuit on mobile equipment, the coefficient is between 0.5 and 1. And we said that we are going to talk more about these parts and design choices. And there are a couple of design choices we should talk about. When designing a hydraulic reservoir, we have to make sure we follow a certain set of rules. To make the air separation better, for example, we have to make sure that the surface area of the work fluid is large enough. So when we are designing a hydraulic tank, we are not designing the reservoir to be tall and slim, but actually we have to make it short and wide to maximize the fluid surface area. Now, in order to improve cooling, of course, we have to make surface areas also larger to dissipate heat, but we also have to make the intake or the suction pipe as far away from the return line. Why? Well, we don't want the work fluid that is returning that just did work for us. We don't want that work fluid getting sucked back in to the circuit and doing some more work because we want that hydraulic fluid to cool off a little bit. So this is how we make sure that the return line fluid is not sucked back in in the hydraulic circuit immediately. And that is also where our barrier comes into place. So the barrier is there to make sure fluid stays a while in the tank and gets to cool down. Because of the wear and tear and aging of the whole hydraulic system, with time there is going to be particle impurity buildup inside the reservoir. Those solid particle impurities end up on the bottom of the reservoir as sediment. Because of this, the bottom of the reservoir should be designed with a slight slope, as we can see here. So impurity separation and infiltration making the bottom of the reservoir sloped. When the accumulated impurities and water build up, we can use the drain line, as we can see here on number 11, to drain all of this stuff from the reservoir. Now, to avoid work fluid vortex and appearance of foam, the end of the return line pipe should be under the fluid level. No free falling of the work fluid inside the reservoir. The return line is always beneath, beneath the surface area of the fluid. Now also on the cover of the reservoir, there should be an opening with a lid and a wired filter for pouring in the new work fluid. And on the bottom should be a discharge point so the whole reservoir can be drained. Now, when we drain the hydraulic fluid, unfortunately, that is not enough. We also have to clean the hydraulic reservoir from the insides. So to facilitate cleaning, there should be an opening on the side of the reservoir, as we can see here on number seven. There's an opening which, when you unscrew it, you can access the insides of the hydraulic reservoir so the reservoir can be cleaned. And the last one is for monitoring fluid levels. There should be a glass panel with a fluid level indicator on the reservoir, as we can see right here on number three. Now, sometimes we don't use these indicators. If we're talking about smaller reservoirs, we have these steel rod uh, oil indicators as we have in car engines to check the oil levels. There are a lot of different variants of hydraulic reservoirs. Smaller reservoirs can be made out of aluminum and those are usually small tanks that are up to 20 liters in capacity. Bigger reservoirs, however, are made by welding steel sheets. These reservoirs are heavy, so they usually have to be transported by machinery. So sometimes they will have parts where the crane hooks can be connected so they can be transported effectively. While building the hydraulic reservoir, 
attention should be paid on the rigidness of the reservoir, not only because of the mechanical strength, but also because of the possible vibrations that may occur during operation. Also, there's a little quirk. If the reservoir is over 40 liters in capacity, there should be a 150 millimeter gap between the bottom of the reservoir and the floor so we can improve cooling. Okay, so we have another area that can dissipate heat. Now, uh, reservoirs on hydraulic schematics are drawn as these little open rectangles. If they're open, here we have a couple of different variants of reservoirs. And sometimes on schematics, you will see uh, that we have a couple of different reservoirs. These are actually the same reservoir. It's just drawn this way because it would be a mess to, you know, have this line going from here and then going directly from here, cutting this motor schematic. To make the schematic more accessible, we can draw the reservoir in a couple of different points, but remember that's actually the same reservoir. We don't have three reservoirs in this system. This is it for hydraulic tanks, reservoirs. Thank you for listening and for staying focused. See you in the next lesson in which we will learn about the piping of the hydraulic circuit and the various types of connection of the lines.